Hello and welcome to another Titanic video. My name is Julie Cook and I'm the author of the book The Titanic and the City of Widows It Left Behind. I wrote the book because my great-grandfather William Besson was a stoker who died on Titanic. He was only 40 when he died and he left behind a wife, my great-grandmother Emily, and five children. My book talks not about the great and the good and the rich and the famous who died on board, but it talks about the crew and their wives and families left behind and what happened to them and how they coped after the tragedy. And seeing as today, April the 15th, is the day that Titanic founded, I wanted to talk and do a small video about what it was like for the women as they waited for news about their men on Titanic. Um, what happened in Southampton was that the news came really in dribs and drabs. They would run from house to house telling each other what they'd heard. The young Daily Echo, which is the newspaper boys, would stand out in the street holding placards saying, hopefully, you know, people are saved. And then it moved on to everyone is dead. And then the news just changed hour by hour and people really didn't know anything concrete. Um, and then finally what people did was they headed, they headed down to Canute Road, which is a road in Southampton where the White Star Line offices are. And they just waited outside and family members congregated outside the building and messages would begin to be posted outside by the people working in the building. And one message was finally put up which said, Titanic founded about 2.30 a.m. April the 15th. About 675 crew and passengers picked up by ship boats of Carpathia and California, remaining in searching position of disaster. Names of those saved will be posted as soon as received. But of course, that's not what happened in the end. After a while, more and more people waited down there waiting for news. First it was mostly men, and then more and more women came too, and some were carrying babies in their arms, others were pushing young babies in prams. There were so many, the local papers reported at one point, was that there were enough prams to block the road and people couldn't, couldn't pass, traffic couldn't pass. And I know that my great-grandmother Emily went down to Canute Road. She took her children with her and she queued with all the other wives and family members waiting to get to the front of the queue to see if William's name was on the list. When she got there, our, our family history has it that his name wasn't anywhere. He wasn't on the survivors list and he wasn't on the list of the dead. So she still didn't know where he was. And so she went down day after day and queued just to see if his name was there, always waiting with hope that finally maybe she'd find something out one way or another. Um, and then finally on April the 17th, the mood just began to change. Um, even the Daily Echo, the local paper, wrote that the pathetic scenes in Southampton after the dread news that Titanic's foundering had been confirmed would have moved the hardest hearts to compassion, they wrote. And then it said, one heard many a sad story of loved ones above the ill-fated vessel, who in many cases were the breadwinners of the family. And in several instances, the speakers we interviewed broke down and sobbed bitterly. Emily finally did hear a few days later by telegram that William was lost at sea. She never knew that he had officially died. She certainly didn't hear he'd survived. He was simply lost at sea like so many men. His body was never found or picked up. She had no physical place to go to grieve for him. So her days spent at Canute Road waiting and waiting for news finally reached an end when she found out he was gone. And on this day, the day Titanic sank, I wanted to just remember how it was for those family members that it wasn't just about the rich and the famous who died on board. A whole swathe of very poor working class people in Southampton queued and had a vigil for days just to find out if their loved one was dead or alive. And I think we should remember them and how much it impacted them in the days and weeks and even years afterwards. Emily, my great-grandmother, posted memorial notices to William every single year after he died. She did one the first year, the year after, and she did every single year in the Daily Echo until finally after 10 years, I think she began to stop. Um, but she missed him terribly and she never did marry or find anybody else. And so I think everyone has different feelings about Titanic. I think anyone who loves the story of Titanic will, will understand that this for me is what I feel about Titanic. It's about the poor, the crew, the working class, and how awful it was for them in the, in the weeks afterwards and the months and years. And so I hope together, while we remember Titanic today, we can also remember those people. And I'll leave you with an image of Canute Road where the women waited for news.